and welcome to Object Oriented Programming Using Python. My name is Bob Nields and I am the Program Chair for Computer Programming Database Management. The objectives for this particular video is to help you get started in this course. So to do so, we're going to learn more about the course, the outcomes of the course, how it relates to your entire curriculum, how to be successful in the course, what you will need to complete the course, how to seek help, and then finally, how to get started. All right? So let's do that. Let's get started. This course is basically one of the core fundamental courses uh, in the curriculum. Based upon what curriculum you're in, meaning uh, is, it, is it SCT, Software Engineering Technology, CINS, Computer Information Systems, or CSD, Computer Software Development, all, of the, all three of those majors have this course in it. Also, our uh, certificate has this course in it. This is one of the building blocks, if you will, to the entire curriculum, okay? As you go through IT100, IT101, IT111, IT102, and IT, and now this one, CPDM, uh, object-oriented programming uh, with, with uh, Python, these are all building blocks. Our goal coming out of this core set of courses, if you will, is to ensure that you are a competent, competent programmer, and then we go on to the tracks, which we want to make you more of a industry uh, you know, specialist, if you will, uh, as a software developer. Make sense? All right. This course is going to focus primarily on object-oriented design and programming. The goal of this course is that. Uh, we developed this course just for that. So we make sure we separated everything, and we spent a lot of time talking about object-oriented. We want you to learn about it in this course, practice it, but you also will have a lot of opportunities to practice object-oriented in subsequent courses as you move through the rest of the curriculum. We developed this course with the idea of what language should we use. Should we continue on with some of the languages we've already used before, or should we do something new? So in this case, because Python has become a popular language in the industry, we decided to take advantage of that and teach Python in doing so. You will find that Python's a very simple language, uh, very easy to learn, uh, very easy to pick up, uh, and uh, it does a nice job in regards to allowing you to learn the concepts of object-oriented without having to worry so much about the details of a language, if that makes sense. I think you'll recognize that a little bit when we get into this later on in the course. All right? That's what the course is all about, object-oriented, and then again, a little bit of Python. The outcomes of this course is a kind of twofold. Because we're going to teach you Python, we need to make sure you understand and apply the structures of programming, uh, the structure programming concepts by writing programs using Python programming language. Uh, in addition, uh, students will be able to demonstrate their knowledge of database programming using the Python programming language. And then finally, we're going to get into object-oriented. You'll be able to define the concepts, understand the concepts, discuss the concepts, and apply those concepts, those principles, if you will, as we will learn about a little bit later on, uh, to, of, of object-oriented to your application programs. The course is going to be split up in, in kind of three different pieces, is how I've kind of defined it so far is that we will get into Python. we got to understand the language a little bit before we could ever start writing object-oriented. So we're going to spend some time doing that. Then we'll get into object-oriented. And we'll, if with time permits, we'll start spending some time in the database programming using Python and object-oriented, if that makes sense, all right? So that's kind of how we're going to go about it as we go through this course. I kind of talked about this before, but a software developer industry, you need to be able to use the current development methodologies. That's what object-oriented is. It's a methodology. It's a way of doing something, okay? Uh, it's it's object-oriented has been around for decades now. Uh, it really came in the 80s. And the whole concept is reuse, reuse of code already written. But it takes it one step further. It creates the power of not only reuse, but flexibility in reusing code. That's what makes it really powerful. Sometimes when you reuse code, for instance, you should at this point in time understand the concepts of a, of a, of a procedure or a module, a user-defined procedure or a module, where you could possibly reuse it. However, reusing that requires you to do exactly the same thing each and every time. If you have a situation where you can use 90% of that function or procedure, 
but you could not, but you don't need the other 10%, you really can't use that anymore. And object oriented, you can. And object oriented, we can build things that, are, that have all kinds of flexibility to it to maximize reuse. So that's sort of the whole idea. So we write it once, everybody can use it. That's what we're trying to, to develop, okay, in this case. All right? Our goal as a graduate of this program is to leave you, uh, it's for you to leave here in a well informed, uh, confident programmer. To do so, you must understand and develop applications using object oriented methodology. It's out there, it's out there quite a bit in industry, okay? And uh, not that every place you go to will be using object oriented, not that every program you'll write will incorporate object oriented, but it's out there. And it's one of the things that you must understand. Every college, just about in the world, I would assume, in a program such as this, we'll be teaching you object oriented. All right, so how can you be successful? This is a slide that kind of repeats in a couple classes, but primarily it's this. Take notes. Uh, use the internet for more understanding. That internet is an amazing tool, especially for software developers. It has everything in the world that you need. We as teachers and instructors at Cincinnati State want to take advantage of that. We want you to understand and want you to understand, uh, what do you want to say, practice utilizing the internet to find answers. In this course, we're pretty much going to guide you and take you through it hand by hand, uh, side by side to make sure you understand. But at some point in time, we've got to kind of push you a little bit to go search on your own. Not everything in the world can be taught to you in a classroom. There's so much to deal with, but you, so you need to be able to understand how to go about researching other things. I recommend you do that starting now. As most of our classes, assignments are your time to practice. You must do the assignments. You must try. You must not fear failure. You must not fear the error. You must embrace all of that. Get stuck. I think it's all great. Do your assignments, though. Try your best at them. If you get stuck, you get stuck. Uh, in some cases, we don't even uh, hurt you on your grade based upon that. That's part of the learning process here, okay? We want you to try things. We want you to get stuck. We want you to ask questions. And we want you to, uh, you know, learn from each one of those situations. Our goal is, is that when you take the, the when you do the projects that are more graded, uh, or graded more at a higher scale, I should say, or the final projects or tests, that you're ready for those, and you do really well at those. All right. So you want to practice as much as you can. Don't fall behind. <laughs> I would imagine by this time, if you're taking this course, you already know that. Once you fall behind, it's really hard to catch up. Uh, try to stay on things as quickly as possible. With that said, we also understand that things happen in life that causes you to fall behind. I really recommend as soon as that thing happens and you recognize you're going to be falling behind by a few days or a week, contact your instructor immediately so we can help you. Our goal here is to make you successful. Our goal here is not to fail you. Our goal is to make you successful. Please do not fear uh, that you are out there alone. Um, if something happens, talk to us. We'll work with you. We need to be fair to everyone. <clears throat> so with that, you know, every situation is going to be different. But when it, when it comes down to it, though, we want you to be successful. That's why you're here, and that's what we want you to be. Don't come in here thinking you know everything. Don't come in here thinking you know every, you know, you're an expert already. Slow down. Enjoy yourself. Allow yourself the time to learn, okay? We'll give you that time, but you got to allow yourself the time to learn. What do I mean by this? Sometimes students come in saying, I already know everything there is to know about Python. I know everything about object oriented. Slow down, calm down, and just take the course. People who come in with that attitude are usually the ones that end up not doing well in the course. I can, I can show you statistics that prove that. Uh, the ones that come in with the, you know, I already know all about this, end up falling behind. They're the first ones, all right? And, uh, and so on. One of my great stories I tell in class quite a bit is that when my first job at AT&T, we were brought in, we sat down at a desk, and we were uh, in, I was in five months of training. And they told us, whatever you think you know, whatever you know you learned at college, forget about it. We're starting all over again, and we're going through to make sure everybody understands how we want you to pursue this. I, rec I recommend that same statement to you. I want you to sit back and whatever you think you know, Put it aside, learn 
from this because what we're doing is building upon the previous classes that you've taken. Every class is well mapped out to be a building block to get you to where you need to be able to get to to be able to be successful in the industry. All right. Um, what else? Ask questions. Seek help. Um, it, it's almost like a duh, right? But a lot of people don't. A lot of people stay silent. A lot of people are scared to ask questions. They might think the questions are stupid. They might think it, it shows uh, that you don't understand. You're in school for a particular reason to learn. We want you to help you learn, but we cannot read your mind. You must ask questions. Feel free to ask them. Now, do you want to, should you ask questions continuously without trying things yourself? No. At some point in time, you got to try things. And once you're, you tried it and you get stuck, ask the questions. Maybe go try to search the answer on the internet beforehand. These are all good things to help you prepare to become a software developer professional. But at some point in time, ask the questions. What's that mean? I don't know. Try to solve the problem yourself within 15 minutes to a half hour and then ask the question versus I got a problem. Hey, what do I do about this? You understand the difference? Anyway, but always seek help if you get stuck. Like I said, as I said in the previous uh, point here, ask questions. Learn when to seek help. Uh, don't wait too long, but uh, don't, don't seek it without trying to solve it yourself. You're becoming a problem solver. Try to solve it yourself and then seek the help. But again, don't let days go by, maybe a half hour or so before you ask the question. I hope that makes sense to you. What do you need to complete the course? Uh, this course, uh, Python is a really interesting programming language. You can write it in so many different venues. You can use Notepad, you can use Visual Studio. In this course, my, our plan is to use Visual Studio since you, uh, we know you have it. Uh, but we're going to play around with some different IDEs, if you will, integrated development environments uh, from Notepad and so on. Uh, you can even run Python on a command line uh, in, in Windows. Uh, you can actually write a piece of code on the command line, press enter, and it will execute. So you, Python is really an interesting language. It's an interpreted language. We'll talk more about that when we get into it. Uh, but you can kind of write it anywhere and everywhere. It's very flexible, as long as Python's loaded on your machines. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into it. So Python must be loaded on your machines, but if you have Windows 10, it should automatically be there, all right? But we'll make sure you know how to do that when we get into that a little bit later in the course, all right? Make sure you save all your work. Uh, if you're doing this at school, do not save any of your work on the PCs at school. Right? Those could be lost. Uh, if you save all your work, my recommendation is use cloud storage. Now, that way it's always backed up. That way you always have it. That way you won't lose your flash drive. A lot of people have USB drives. I understand that, but I can't tell you how many people lose, how many times people lose those. Um, so my recommendation in today's environment is use cloud storage. Uh, you don't need much. Uh, if you get a OneDrive or a note, uh, notebook box, I think it's called, uh, a Dropbox, I should say, uh, you can set up accounts in those, and they're free, for, and you get a couple gig for free. You won't need a gig for this class. You probably just need a, a meg or so. Uh, all right? So that's how I would do that. Uh, how to seek help. Uh, when you need help, ask. Uh, but we already kind of talked about this a little bit. First, ask your instructor for help. Uh, when in the classroom. Uh, if you are taking this class online, email your instructor. Your instructor should give it back to you in less than two business days, not including weekends or holidays. If they do not get back to you, email again and then call. Let's talk about that for one second. The goal for our online instructors is to get back to you. Every instructor has their own policies on this. My policy for the, uh, if you take my classes, Bob Niels' classes, would be to try to get back to you within 24 hours. That seems reasonable, uh, but don't expect we're sitting here waiting for you to have a problem and we're gonna answer it in five seconds. That's the hard part about an online environment, okay? But expect it back within 24 hours, but as I mentioned here, two business days at the latest. If you, don't, if you do not hear back, don't get too frustrated. Right off the bat, email again. Sometimes emails get lost. Sometimes emails go to spam. Sometimes they just get overlooked. It's I'm sorry, it's part of it. Uh, many of our instructors are instructing many students, and after and sometimes things get overlooked. It's not an excuse; it's just a fact. Okay. 
uh, I don't like it uh, when we miss these type of emails, but uh, I, it's just a fact. It just happens. Uh, with that, email again. And then give it another 24 hours. If you don't hear anything, then call. Now, what does this mean, especially for the online student? This means you probably can't be starting your assignments and stuff one hour before they're due. Look at things. Try to understand things. Take the week and make sure you're understanding things. And if you have questions, give us enough time to get back to you before due dates are there or, or come about. Does that make sense? So with you know, the 24 hour rule, two day rule and so on. Uh, if you, you know, if, if an assignment is due Sunday night or Monday night or Saturday night and you're not looking at it until that time and you have questions, don't expect somebody to be able to answer them. I cannot promise that any instructor uh, within the program will be able to answer any questions over the weekends. That's not really fair uh, because they have a life too, okay? But most of them will. Uh, trust me, you'll get a lot of answers over the weekends, but just don't expect it. So if you send a question over the weekend, don't expect an answer to probably till the next business day. Make sense? Uh, if you need some help, uh, set up an appointment with the full-time professors at our college. We got uh, right currently, uh, we have, I should just say, we have many full-time professors. They all have office hours. Uh, you should know who they are uh, based upon being in our curriculum. Uh, as the chair, you can always come and see me. All you need to do is uh, get on Starfish and make an appointment with me. I'm probably going to be your advisor. I'm your chair. You should be able to find me pretty easily. No matter who's doing the instruction for this course, if for some reason you need to sit down, especially if you're taking this online face-to-face, -face, feel free to make an appointment and come see me. All right? Uh, there's others also you can actually go see. Uh, so it doesn't have to be me. So we have full-time professors around who are happy to help you in just about any course, okay? Uh, but you know, we have tutors, but prior to asking for a tutors, make sure you contact the instructor first. How tutoring kind of works is that we're looking for other students to tutor. So not every situation, there'll be tutors for particular topics. Uh, if you feel you need a tutor for this course, talk to your instructor and let them help you find this tutor. But you might be shocked that if you just spent a little bit of time in office hours with your instructor, the need for the tutor might go away. But if you need one, let us know. How to get started. Go to the course and really understand the syllabus. That's the key to this thing. That's kind of our uh, contract, if you will. Uh, you know, understand that, make sure you understand how to get a hold of your instructor. That should be out on Blackboard and also on the syllabus. The outcomes of the course, the schedule for the course, the grading criteria for the course, and the rules of the course. How they're going to grade late assignments and so on. Make sure you understand all that prior to getting started, okay? Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about anything on the syllabus, ask your instructor now. Okay, now's the time to get that all out of the way. We're beginning the course. Make sure you understand everything. If you have some questions or some concerns, talk to them or talk to her, okay? Everything should be there. And based on the mode you're taking this course, either live or online, follow the instructions, uh, your instructor's instructions. For online, go to week one under content and follow those instructions. You'll notice on the online, there's due dates. Meet those due dates. Don't fall behind. Okay, meet the due dates. That's the only way to keep up with the course. It's the only way that an instructor can uh, really keep teaching and, and building upon what you've already learned in the course and so on. If you don't meet due dates, you're behind. And then next thing you know, uh, the instructor's moving on and you don't understand because you haven't done or practiced the work before. Keep with the due dates. I can't stress it enough in this curriculum. All right. Above all, I want you to do really well in this course. Again, our goal here at Cincinnati State is to make you successful. Uh, we can't do it alone. You must be accountable for your own success. You must do the work. You must do some research. You must love and embrace solving problems and learning this kind of stuff. If you do all of that, I guarantee you things are going to work out really, really well. And to do all that, have a little bit of fun. Learning should be fun. You know, it shouldn't be a big chore. You're in college now, and you're here to become a software developer. Uh, in doing so, it should be fun. If you find that it's a drudgery and you hate it all, maybe you shouldn't be a software developer, <laughs> okay? Uh, so and if you find that's the case, come talk to me, and I'm happy to discuss the whole thing with you.
with that, welcome to the course and let's have some fun.